Okay, question four, the last question on this paper, and it is an absolute doozy, let me tell you. So let's have a go at it, guys. Uh, we've got a part of a graph of a function g. Uh, it looks like an upside-down quadratic. 16 minus x squared all over 4 is shown below. Okay, so there it is. There's g. Okay. Now, okay, what's part A? Let's have a look. Points B and C are the positive x-intercept and y-intercept of the graph G, respectively. Let's find them. Uh, B and C. Okay, get that? Good. Uh, as shown in the diagram above, yes, all right? The tangent to the graph of G at the point A is parallel to the line segment B, C. So that would be from there up to there, like that, okay? So we've got to find the equation of the tangent to the graph of G at the point A, knowing that it's got to be parallel to the line segment B to C or C to B, okay? Having thought about this, let me see if I can come up with a little bit of a game plan for you. We always need a game plan to go somewhere because that usually, even if it's not a full game plan, it'll point us in the right direction. Now, if I can work out what this point is, numerical value of the x-intercept and numerical value of the y-intercept, which is going to be easy to do because I've got the rule, okay, for g, then I can work out the gradient of the line joining b and c, or c and b, that's going to be a numerical gradient value, all right? Now, that's going to be the gradient of this tangent line. So I've got, so then I've got the gradient of the tangent line, but obviously I need a point that it goes through, and the point that the tangent line goes through, which is on the g of x curve, is at a. So therefore, I've got to find out what this point is, the numerical x and y coordinates of this point. Because if I do that, then to get the, the equation of a straight line, I need the gradient, which I will have by that stage, and also the x and y known point that it goes through. And I've got to find the x and y numerical coordinates of the point A. Now, how do we do that bit? Well, I think it's all in this here. This is the rule they give us. We can differentiate that and get the gradient function, which is going to be, let me see, it's going to be uh, minus a half of x, all right? So if minus a half x is the rule for the gradient, and we've got a numerical value for it, having worked out the gradient of the line b to c, and therefore this line being parallel to that, as they told us, then we have the numerical gradient value for this line, and we have the rule for it, we can substitute in that rule and solve it for x. And that, my friends, will do it, because then we can take that value of x, get the value of y, and everything's done. We get the equation of the straight line. Let's do that, shall we? So firstly, we need b and c, as I said, yes? So um, secondly, we need the gradient of bc, and thirdly, a point a on the curve with the same gradient as bc. Finally, then we get the tangent of uh, the line through A. That's what I was doing. So for g of x, when x is naught, I'm getting uh, I'm getting the y-intercept now. G of naught will be four, so that's the point C naught and four, the y-intercept. Then when y is naught, we get the x-intercept. That's going to be plus or minus four, but we want the plus four value, don't we? So that's B at four and zero. Well, cooking along nicely. Hence, the uh, gradient of BC, if you work that out, rise over run, it's going to be minus 1, okay? Now, here's the rule for the gradient function of G of X, okay? G dashed of X is going to be minus a half X, but we know that minus a half of X is a minus 1. So there you go, now we can get X, therefore X is 2. See, we're nearly there now. Now, subbing X is 2 into the rule for G of X, we can get the Y coordinate at A, having now got the X coordinate of A being 2, and we get this, and it comes to 3. So we're laughing, guys. So A is the point 2, 3. So now you just plug and chug into the equation for a straight line. The tangent at A is going to be Y is minus X plus C, and now we sub in the point 2 and 3, and what do we get? We get C. It's going to be 5. So there we go, and therefore Y is minus X plus 5. There you go. That's it. That is the answer to this question. Yes, very good. 
Uh, now, the shaded region shown in the diagram above is bounded, or the diagram below in the way I've done it there on the screen for you, is bounded by the graph of G, the tangent at the point A and the x-axis and the y-axis, the shaded region they're talking about, this bit here and this bit here, okay? Evaluate the area of this shaded region. What I think I'd like to do is work out the area of this triangle here, which is going to be very, very easy to do, and then subtract the area in here, in here like this, which the parabola makes with the x and the y axis. That's my preferred approach. What about you? Okay, well, let's go. So that's going to be uh, D Norton 5 and E 5 and naught. those intercepts which uh, we got from knowing the equation of the line, uh, that tangent line going through A. Okay, now, area of ODE, that triangle ODE, is going to be 5 times 5 over 2, 25 over 2. See, half base times height, you know that, don't you? Now, the area under the curve is going to be 1 quarter of uh, that there, with respect to X, from 0 to 4. Well, that's just plug and chug, isn't it? You know how to do that. Of course you do. So, um, yes, we get that. Now, we'll um, evaluate that now between 0 and 4. And what do we get? Does that make sense to you? Just have a look. 16 times 4 is 64, minus 4 cubed, which is 64 over 3, that's right. That's with 4 plugged in there into the square bracket. Now, minus a quarter of 0 plugged in there, which is just 0 anyway. So that gets us mm, a quarter times... What have I got there? Just have a look. Yes, that is two-thirds of 64. 64 minus one-third of it is two-thirds of it. And what does that get us to? Yes, cancellation throughout the nation. We get 32 over 3. OK, well, now we're very, very nearly there now, guys. So, therefore, the area of the shaded region will be the area of the triangle minus the area under this curvy bit. And that will get us... Aha! Uh, when you LCM, that is... Um, uh, in terms of 6, you'll get that, and what does that come to? 11 over 6, all right? That's the answer to that one, okay? So we've knocked that one off as well. Very nice job, guys. Now, part B. Let Q be a point on the graph, or it looks like any point now, on the graph of y equals g of x. Um, find the uh, positive value of the x-coordinate of Q for which the distance O to Q is a minimum and find this distance. So let's just read that again. What are we doing? We're finding the x coordinate of q and we're finding uh, for, uh, for which the this line here, o to q, is a minimum, right? And then we're going to find that distance, okay? Now I think that's pretty straightforward, don't you? Uh, we'll just draw the line there and we're going to work out the distance between two points from o to q by uh, Pythagoras, aren't we? And that's that, isn't it? Yes, the, uh, the square root of x squared plus the y squared, have it being g of x all squared, and then we'll uh, basically take the derivative of that and set it equal to zero uh, for a minimum value. Okay, we need to solve for the derivative of that length of that line OQ with respect to x being zero, and I think that's a perfect uh, case for Mr. Kaz. Enter Mr. Kaz. Oh, there you are. So, very good. So, let's see what I did. Um, I'm saying that is my function, f1 of x, and I've got the Roger Dodger from the calculator, and then I'm saying, okay, now look at this. This is the square root of x squared plus f1 of x all squared, and I'm putting that in as f2 of x. Okay, now I'm solving, in this third line here, I'm solving for the derivative of f2 of x equals 0 for x. Mmm, mighty fine. And what did I get here? Gracious me. Uh, x is minus 2 root 2 or 0 or plus root 2. But look, just looking over here in, in the context of the situation, guys, um, it can only be uh, 2 root 2. It can't be 0, obviously, and can't be negative because that's the one that, that applies over here, I would say. Uh, yes, that's right, it is. So therefore, that's now what are we supposed to find? Just have a look back here. The x coordinate. Yeah, well, the x coordinate of q looks like it's 2 root 2, and now we've got to find the dis do we? The, yeah, the minimum distance, yes. So we're looking for the distance now. That's that is f2 of x, uh, where x is 2 root 2, and we get the distance is 2 root 3, yeah? 
Okay, so the x is 2 root 2, the minimum distance is 2 root 3. Mr. Box, thank you very much. Well, we're cleaning it up, guys, but, but don't worry, the, the nuclear bomb is just around the corner. Uh, but we'll clean it up too. We'll clean it up. Uh, the tangent to the graph of G at the point P has a negative gradient and intersects the y-axis at the point naught and k. OK. OK. All right, got it. OK. Uh, and where k goes from 5 to 8, I'm really not quite sure of the significance of that. We'll just keep that uh, in the back of our minds, yeah? Now, we're going to find the gradient of the tangent in terms of k. Now, this is where most students who sat this exam just came to grief. They weren't sure at all what to do. Not at all. And that then prevented them from doing the, the next three parts of the question because this information was needed for the next uh, few parts of the question, which is very sad. So I think you can, you can appreciate that the question has just got ugly. Okay, And it takes a while to get your head around what they're asking, particularly when you're tired and you've just... You're almost through the whole exam now and you've just got a few questions to go and they really, really arc it up and make it industrial strength. But anyway, look, we will, we will push through and we will do this now. Guys, we're looking for the gradient of the tangent in terms of K. The, the reason this is so difficult is because it's kind of like it's all around about the, the wrong way because the thing which is driving the position of K up here is the is where this point P is on the graph of G of X and, and hence uh, where the tangent basically goes, you see, because the gradient of the tangent is all determined by where this point P is. So it seems to me we've got to get, if we've got to get the gradient of the tangent, therefore we, uh, we know that the gradient of the tangent, whatever point P is, if you call it, say, A, call it a specific point A, then you know that the gradient of the tangent at P would be minus a half of A. Now, okay, if then, guys, we can establish a relationship between K and A, then I think we'd be right. Now, let's just play with that a bit. If I call that A, and then 16 minus A squared over 4 would be the Y coordinate of it, the gradient of this thing, of this line here, from, from here down to here would be minus a half of a. And you can also do it in terms of rise and run, can't you? So that's what I think is going to get us the relationship between k and a, which we can then basically turn into the gradient of the tangent, not in terms of a, but in terms of k, because we have a connection between the two. Now, if that was too much gobbledygook for you just to be able to handle, I just, I just want to show you this neat little graphic I prepared. You can see here that this point here is the point uh, where the tangent is on the graph. Now, if you move this point, you'll see that k is is changed. See? See that? I'm moving it up. Now I'm moving it down. See that? Yeah. So back here, and we'll go for it now. Okay, I call this... Now, this is a major step forward. We, we want to call this point something, because it's basically what calls the shots in terms of where k ends up on this y-axis. So, all right, we'll call it a... 16a squared... minus a squared over 4... Therefore, that's the point P. Now, the gradient of the curve at point P equals the tangent, gradient of the tangent DP, right? Which happens to be minus a half A, as we were just discussing. Now, we're going to do it in terms of rise and run. The gradient of DP is also equal to the Y value here. That's K minus this Y value here. That's the rise over 0 minus A, which is the run, okay? Now, if we connect those two and make them equal to each other, which, of course, they are, then, then, guys, we get a relationship between K and A, which hopefully will work the way we just we want it to. Okay, now, having got this far, if I just pretty this up a bit, and if I can get A in terms of K, right? Remember, I'm trying to get the gradient of the tangent in terms of K. This gives me a connection between A and K. Now, if I can get A in terms of K, knowing that the gradient at this point P will be minus a half of A, then it will be in terms of K, once I basically substitute in the A in terms of the K. If you get what I mean, I'll show you. Look, if I cross multiply that, I get that, and then prettying that up a bit, simplifying, I get that. Okay, now, if I solve that for A in terms of K, 
I'll get that and therefore taking the square root I will get a is 2 times the square root of k minus 4 knowing that a has to be greater than 0 in the context of the situation we're dealing with here so the negative square root doesn't make any uh, sense in a contextual sense that is alright so now look you see guys look we've got the connection between a and k now the gradient at this point is minus a half of a in view of the fact that we've got this uh, quadratic as we know it is and we've already uh, found the gradient function earlier so therefore uh, we're, we are there we are there the gradient is minus a half a which is that okay now that is it that is it that it was a really hard question particularly at the end of the paper but it gets worse <laughs> it gets worse but as I said to you, uh, if you weren't able to get that out, unfortunately you couldn't do the rest of the paper, which is very sad. They should have said, show that, that that relationship was what we just found. Then then people would have been able to proceed. You know, Even if they couldn't get that step, they could use the answer. Okay, so what's this? Uh, we've got to find the rule A for the function of K that gives the area of the shaded region. Now this is building up to the grisly crescendo which this exam was. So let's read this again, all right? What are they, what are they talking about? They want a function of k that gives the area of the shaded region. All right. Well, okay, we've got this in k, in terms of k, but if I, if I was trying to work out the area of this triangle here, I'd need the base. I've already got the height, the height is k, then I could subtract the already uh previously determined area of this bit in here under the quadratic -y thing and between the x and the y axis uh, and that would give me the area of the shaded region and it would be in terms of k now let's just think about this uh, we know we've already worked out the gradient of this line in terms of k haven't we we've worked out the gradient in terms of k in the previous step so we can use that I think with a rise over run kind of scenario uh, to get here what the run is because we know what the rise is we know what the gradient is and both of them are in terms of k that would be the strategy guys if you if you're clear-headed enough at this stage of the exam to think about it so the gradient is that uh, and so therefore k over the run which is what I'm looking for is equal to that okay and therefore we can get OE which is that thing there that is the base of the triangle and you might be wondering why I got rid of the minus sign here. Well, I'm just interested in a length. I don't, I don't care whether it's a positive or a negative distance. I just want a length, okay? So I'm saying that this height over this length will be that value, okay? And that gets me the ratio, okay? The, just the ratio is what I'm interested in to get the length of OE, and that's what it is. Okay, so once we've got that, we can say the area of the triangle is half base times height, which will be that. Okay, and now that's that. Now we've got to subtract the area under the curve, which we already found out previously uh, was 32 over 3 from the previous part on the previous screen. And now I think we're just about there now. Uh, it's there. The shaded area is that thing. Thank you, Mr. Box. All right. Okay, what's next? Uh, find the maximum area of the shaded region and the value of K for which this occurs. Hmm. And... The funny thing about the next question, which I haven't revealed to you yet, is the next sub part of the question is find the minimum area of the shaded region. So they're all they're talking about a maximum area and a minimum area, which gets really, really uh, mind bending. So I opted at this stage to draw a graph of what they were talking about with this area of this shaded region because I couldn't sort of get my head around what they were on about, and that's what I got. That's what I got. Okay, and that's a perfect example of where CAS just comes in and saves your life. So this looks like, but this is a minimum. But they are, aren't they asking for a maximum? Well, this is very, very interesting. So therefore, guys, they're up to some very, very nasty tricks here. It's a restricted domain, remember, because at the very, very start of this, this grisly little crescendo, they said that K could go from 5 to 8, didn't they? Yes? that's where we use this information. So I can work out uh, the value of this function when uh, over here, uh, using x here, uh, instead of k, just for convenience, where x was 5, and I could work it out again where x is 8, and you would have the, the y-coordinate uh, at uh, where x is 5, and the y-coordinate where x is 8, and whichever one is bigger is going to be 
the like the maximum area of the shaded region that they're asking for, if you get what I mean. So the maximum, uh, as I've written there, can only be from the end points where k is 5 and k is 8. So what I've done here is I've said, OK, uh, plugging this thing into my calculator, there's the Roger Dodger, and I'm saying what is f1 of 5, what is f1 of 8, and then you've got to work out which one's bigger. So if you uh, double that, you get 32 over 6, this one's bigger, 8 is bigger, OK? So therefore, uh, the maximum occurs when k is 8. Now, what do they want to know? What is the maximum area? So that is the maximum area. Yes, and the value of k is 8. Uh, Mr. Box, thank you again. Okay? All right, the last, uh, the, the last bit of this grisly, grisly question, find the minimum area. Well, that's all right, because we worked out the minimum area, didn't we? we, we, we at least we saw it on the graph. So... Um, we're just going to go through the motions now, but we know what we're doing. So you solve for da dk equals zero, and that'll uh, get you k, and then you sub k for the uh, minimum area. So let's just go through the motions. K is to the rescue. Um, all right, I'm putting this. Th I put this thing in uh, to my calculator is f1 of x, and got the Roger Dodger. Then I said solve for the thing equals zero, and I'm solving for x, and I get x is naught or x is 16 over 3, that's 5 and 1 third, and therefore I'm now saying what is the area when x is 5 and 1 third, and I get this beastly looking thing over here, but that, my dear friends, is the end of the drama. There it is, a min is uh, that thing there uh, when k is 5 and a third, and I think that's the end of the paper. I think that's it, but there, was, there were very, very few students ever got to that point there. Uh, it was just too hard, too much at the end of a, of a gruelling paper uh, when a lot of heads are just shut down. And uh, as I said to you, many of them couldn't get that relationship um, uh, with the, the K in it where you were looking for the gradient of the tangent a few parts ago. OK, well done. I'm out of here. I'm going to get a nice cup of tea. I'll see you soon and all the very best to you.